Hey everyone, it's Voltar. Welcome back. Now, how many of you out there were around during the mod ship wars of the early 2000s? Well, I was there, and PS1 mod ships were a trivial endeavor. You could go to any mom and pop store back in those days, wait for everybody to leave, let the guy behind the counter be alone, look at him, stare at him for just a minute and say, Hey, I need to play Metal Gear. Can you help me? And more than likely, he could. But chipping the PS2 back in those days wasn't as trivial. It was actually quite difficult and it required a high level of soldering and precision. Now back in those days, it was often quite costly too to have a PS2 fitted with a mod ship. And there weren't a lot of people around who really had the confidence to do it while taking the risk of destroying someone's very expensive game console. Now over the lifespan of the PS2, Sony made it increasingly difficult to install mod chips with each subsequent revision of the hardware, making the soldering that much more difficult. Now I call the early 2000s the mod chip wars because it was always a game of tug and war between Sony and the hackers who were fitting these consoles with chips such as, oh lord, the Messiah, the Matrix Infinity, the DMS line, Mars Pro, the list goes on and on. Now today, we're going to be looking at the final revision of the PlayStation 2. The SCPH-9001 has been coined the anti-mod PS2 as Sony pulled out every trick in the book to thwart mod chip installers from touching this hardware. Now look, don't just take my word for it, but installing a mod chip in this final revision of the PS2 requires absolute precision and a higher knowledge of solder systems. This certainly doesn't need to be your first, second, third, fourth, or fifth modding endeavor. We need some experience, and we've got to build that up. Now, fortunately and thankfully, this system was donated by the legendary Modsville USA. Check out his YouTube channel. Who wanted to see my take on this installation? Now, also keep in mind, this video isn't going to serve as a step-by-step -step guide or tutorial, but I will be talking about tools, techniques, so prepare your bodies for that. Now, sit back strap on and let's master the anti-mod ps2 now before we get started let's move our playstation 2 out of the way and let's talk about some of the tools that we're going to be using during the installation of this mod chip now here are just a few things that i'm going to put out and the first thing that i'm going to talk about are fluxes now you have the option of either using a nice rosin soldering flux that's in a jelly format or you can certainly use a no clean flux that is liquid. It's a little trickier to work with, but it'll do the job just fine. And I like to use MG Chemicals, halogen free, no clean. I just take this old, old bottle that I have and I constantly refill it from my larger MG Chemicals bottle. So these are the two fluxes that you can use and I'll demonstrate both of these during the installation. Now quite simply here, we have a pair of tweezers. These are just some very old, ESD friendly tweezers. We'll be using these in some tight spaces. We'll also be using a uh, wire stripping utility. Now I like to, I love the Paladin Tools wire stripper. It goes all the way down right here uh, to 30 aug. It's fantastic. I use these. They can strip with precision and they just work well. Now the solder that I like to use is a Kester brand. Now I like to use 6040, but I oftentimes will mix this up. Uh, sometimes I'll use a 6336 uh, or some other form or chemistry of leaded solder. But the key here is leaded solder. That's what I like to use. And Kester, in my opinion, is some of the best of the best. I've been using it for about 10 years exclusively. And of course, one of the most important things that you can have is the actual wiring itself. Now this is just some generic wire wrapping wire. It's 30 gauge in thickness and it just has a very cheap poly jacketing here that will easily strip just like that. Not a problem. Now if your eyes aren't as good as they used to be, a jeweler's loop will work quite nicely. Now this is just a very old Radio Shack branded uh, magnifier. It has three different levels and you can use this to ensure that your work is clean and that everything is in good order. These can be found anywhere commonly for just a few dollars. Great little tool to have. And of course, back in the day, everybody was using a super glue or an adhesive to make their wire wraps and their wire routing 
beautiful. Now we'll be doing a little bit of that. This isn't super important, but the nice thing about adhering your wires to the board is that it makes everything that much cleaner and it's so much easier to repair or to get back into the system in the future if you have to. So just any generic super glue will work just fine for that. Now the soldering station of choice that I like to use are my Kester T12 stations. I'm going to heat these to 310 degrees Celsius. And if you haven't watched my buying your first soldering station video, I highly encourage you to do so. You can get a great value for a really nice soldering station. And the tip we'll be using is just a standard T12 D08 tip. Now here's the thing about tips. A lot of people have this wrong notion that your tip needs to be super, super small because you're working with super small components. That is not true. You want to size your tip slightly larger or as large as you can to the work that you're going to be working with that you can comfortably work with. We need to get as much heat as we possibly can into those joints and we also need to make sure that we're not keeping our heat on those joints and on these components any longer than we have to. Now we have our PlayStation in hand. The first thing that we're going to do is take this apart and to do that we're simply going to flip this around and we're going to be removing these little stoppers out of position so we can access the screws here and as you can see we're already missing one. That's quite okay. Let's remove these, take this factory warranty sticker off and we'll take the shells apart by flipping these out. Let's go for it. Now removing these stoppers is a walk in the park. We're just going to take our tweezers here and we're going to leverage the tweezer in between the case and the actual stopper itself and very carefully price forward just like that and we'll be exposing a screw. Let's do that for the remaining stoppers. Easy enough so far guys. Now the next step is going to be to simply remove these screws with a Phillips screwdriver. Let's zip these out and this case comes right apart. Now just a mental note, these two bumpers down here at the bottom, these stoppers don't come out, they stay intact. So we'll just flip this around, grab on each side and very carefully lift forward, front, and out. We now have access. Now we have a series of screws here that we need to remove. Nonetheless, we need to go ahead and remove safely these ribbon connectors so that these will be liberated and we don't have to worry about tearing these. There's just a few here in addition to this power supply uh, interconnect as well as for this fan. Not a big deal. Let's just zoom in and pop these out and then we'll zip these screws right out of the station. Great work. Now we're going to remove the optical drive and this is very simple. This fat ribbon cable that we dislodged, it is held in with an adhesive. We must very carefully peel this back. So very, very carefully. Gently pull back with very minimal force. Take your time. It's a walk in the park and after just a few moments it will eventually give just like that. Now here's the deal. When we remove this optical drive, what we're going to do is we're just going to pick it up maybe a quarter of an inch away from the main board, just like this. That's about a quarter of an inch. And we're going to flip it over exactly like so. To reveal this FFC interconnect, we're going to pull the drawer out so we can dislodge this ribbon cable so we don't have to remove this cable at this given moment. Now, the brown latch can either be pulled up with a fingernail or with just a pair of tweezers very gently. Just get under it and pull up just like that. Now we can move the optical drive out of the way and we have our ribbon cable still in place and we haven't disturbed this adhesive. And that's very important that you keep this ribbon cable connected to this main board because if you were to lift this ribbon cable out, what can happen is as the CD spins underneath, this ribbon cable can actually kink up and bow up, meaning that this ribbon cable can actually bow up like this and it can come into contact with your CD as the sled of the laser moves and it can actually introduce scratches. So you want to keep this nice and tight and nice and low, just like this. In other words, don't peel this off. Okay, we're now ready to remove the remaining screws and we can pop this main board 
right out of place. Now we've removed all of the screws, we're ready to take this all out. We'll begin with the power supply right here, just simply lift directly up, like so. Comes out in one assembly, we'll set this to the side. And the main board is also very simple. Now in order to get this out, it may be a little cumbersome if it's never been out before. Simply grab the memory card and controller ports, lift up just a little bit here, come to the other side, lift up a little bit there. Tilt it forward and bring it back just like that. And now you have access to the PS2 9001 series mainboard. It's very small. Now to take this top shell off, it's very simple. This RF plating isn't held on by anything. It can be discarded just like so. And boy oh boy, that's an awfully small motherboard if I do say so myself. Okay, we've got access to the main board. Disassembly at this point is complete. Let's keep going. Now we have our motherboard here. We have our mod chip, which is a Modbo 5, and we need to make a decision. We need to decide where on the board this mod chip needs to live. And I think that I'm going to place it right in this vicinity by looking at the installation diagram. This tells me that as far as I'm concerned, I think this is the most optimal position, so it's going to live right in here, somewhere just like that. And in order to fix this, I'm going to show you a little trick. We are going to actually take hot glue. Yes, you heard me correctly. We're going to take hot glue and we're going to introduce some to the back of this mod chip, just like that. Be generous, be generous. I'm gonna turn this around. I'm gonna take a look here and I am just going to position this where I see, where I deem Ideal. Now, I think right in there is pretty good. And when I have it pretty much where I want it to live, I'm just going to press rather firmly like so. Whoops. Just like that. And my mod chip has been affixed with some hot glue. No problem. Perfectly safe. And a perfect, perfect, reasonable utility for hot glue. Great work. Now from this point on, it's going to get quiet for quite a while. I'll be prepping these pins for solder as we'll be affixing conductors from this array of pads to this BIOS chip. And I'll show you how to use petroleum rosin flux and I'll also show you how to use a no clean liquid flux system in order to make this super easy. I'll be demonstrating it without talking about it. So let's just have a fun time. Let's do some soldering. Let's get to it.
Well, I have to say, this came out absolutely beautifully. Great wire routing, everything looks fantastic, the solder is spot on, our conductors are nice and short and taut, everything here looks just fantastic. Well done. And before we go any further, let's talk about this CR2032 battery. Now this console, this particular revision, came out in 2007. Let's replace this CR2032 while we're here. So what I'm going to do is just take my tweezers here. I'm going to pop that battery out. And I'm going to install a Maxell CR2032. This is my favorite brand. Now this is the time where we temporarily put this back together, we'll put it back in its case, and we'll do a quick test run before we button everything back up. Now if you didn't notice while we were disassembling this, this case has some significant wear and that is a good thing. That just means that this system has had a long, healthy life. But we're going to replace this case with one found on AliExpress. Well guys, I had a great time doing this. I've not done a PS2 mod in a long, long, long spell. Now this was actually the Japanese version of the 9000 series, and I'm sorry I forgot to mention that. This is actually a little more difficult to do than the NTSC U main board that came out in the States and in Canada. So it's a little more difficult, but I had a great time. And don't feel overwhelmed if you can't get this, or if you can't do this. Build your skills up. You have nothing but time on your hands. Don't rush into this. When you're ready, give it a chance. Just use some common sense and think about where your skills are before embarking on something like this. Now you'll see people out there who will say to you, you don't have to be hard modding these PS2s anymore. It's just not necessary. Soft mods can do everything. Guys, that's BS. That's absolutely not true. Soft mods can't directly boot PS1 backups. Soft mods can't directly boot out of region PS1 games. Soft mods can't directly boot original import titles. Soft mods can't do a lot of things that a hard mod can do. So even though the install is tedious and it's a lot of work, you can't beat it. Don't let anybody ever tell you different. Now, if you liked any of the tools that I used, whether that be the solder, soldering station, or anything like that, I have links in my video description where you can buy the same stuff that I use. Of course, HD retrovision cables, there's no better way to connect your PS2 to your RetroTINK 5X or OSSC or even your CRT. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Give me a sub if you haven't already. Like the video. Tell me what you think. Tell me what you'd like to see in the future. I'm really happy to be back and I'm really having a great time doing all these mods with you guys. And of course, special thanks to Modsville USA for donating this PlayStation 2. Now, I hope you enjoyed this, guys, and I hope that you guys are taking care of each other out there. We'll get through this world together. One way or the other, we're going to make it.